Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and today we are going to be taking a look at all four of the brand new LEGO Monkey Kid June 1st, 2023 sets that LEGO is releasing. And wow, are they fantastic. LEGO Monkey Kid consistently gives us some of the best sets and designs that we have really ever seen from any original LEGO theme, and I can't wait to showcase every single one of them just now for you. So right here we have all four of the new sets. We have the amazing Dragon of the East Palace, the Guardian Dragon from May, the Mighty Azure Lion, and Monkey Kid's Cloud Airship. It's a really good mix between two hero things, one villain build and one location build. It's a pretty good wave composition, especially since there are only four sets, and I can't wait to showcase all of them for you. And so, without further ado, let's just jump right in to the builds. Okay, so here they are. This is all four of the newest Summer 2023 LEGO Monkey Kid releases. Going from smallest to largest, we have set number 80046. That is Monkey Kid's Cloud Airship, retailing for 50 US dollars and 48 euros. 80047 is May's Guardian Dragon, retailing for a very reasonable 53 euros and a very unreasonable 75 US dollars. What's going on with that? We're getting to that. Next up, we have 80048, the Mighty Azure Lion, retailing for 75 euros and 80 US dollars. And all the way in the back, we have 80049, Dragon of the East Palace, retailing for 190 euros and 190 dollars. Now, this wave of Monkey Kid continues the storyline from where the latest season left off, featuring a massive Titan scale Azure Lion as the main big bad, or maybe not big bad, maybe big misunderstood anti hero, as some people would like to say, as well as a whole Guardian Dragon from May, which is one of, the, honestly, the highlights of the wave. We have the Cloud Airship, which is kind of strange. I'm not really quite sure how I feel about it. I definitely have a lot of thoughts, and... Lastly, the amazing, majestic Dragon of the East Palace. So the way I want to tackle this mega review is because I'm going to be posting individual reviews of all these sets in the coming days, I don't necessarily want to go too in-depth into each model. Treat this video as kind of an overview of all of these sets, and I talk about the wave composition and value and prices, and I briefly showcase them just alongside each other. And then if you want to see any of them in-depth, be sure to stay tuned to Duck Bricks in the next few days because I will be publishing imminent reviews of all of the other sets as they come out. So do let me know in the comments which ones you want to see first. I think the order is going to be Tomorrow, May 19th, will be the review of the Dragon Palace. May 20th will be the review of the May Dragon. We're going to take a quick break to review some of the Ninjago Summer sets, which I know a lot of people are excited for. And then on May 25th, we'll go to the Azure Lion. And May 26th is going to be the Blimp. So if you want to shift around the order, do let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. But otherwise, that is the schedule for the individual reviews. But first of all, much like many other mega reviews of different LEGO themes, the thing that I actually want to start off with are the mini figures, because I feel like that's the easiest one to just take a quick look at first. So let's jump on over to the figures. Alright, so now it's time to take a look at each of the minifigures in these sets, just a brief overview of the composition of the minifigures of the wave as a whole, because we are getting a lot of really nice and unique characters with this latest wave, especially with the Dragon of the East Palace, we are getting characters that we have never seen before in LEGO form, but we're also getting brand new outfits for a lot of our favorite characters, especially the main characters are now equipped in Celestial Garb, which looks very, very cool, so let's take a look at those right now. So the first ones to take a look at is obviously the main character, Monkey Kid himself. So let me bring over the different variants of MK to take a look at right here. I'm going to swipe all these other minifigures to the side so we can take a look at them in a second. So my favorite minifigure of the wave where Monkey Kid is concerned is definitely, I guess it's a spoiler alert, but you can see it in the sets, so I guess it's not that much of a spoiler, but it is the monkey version of Monkey Kid himself. This is after he was kind of tormented by the spirits inside the scroll, so you really have kind of a more bestial look for him. He has the monkey tail on the back, which is very unique, and I really love that face print. It is exclusive to the Azure Lion set, which I think makes the most sense. It makes sense that that would be included in that set, but I think it's a really cool and interesting look for him. It would have been even more interesting, I think, to, if they even pushed the design even more and made it more than just a face print. I don't know, if they had done something a little different with the hair, that would have been interesting, I think, or just had something more special going on with it. But overall, as it is, I do like the face print. It is a very unique one to see, and that's what it kind of looks like overall. 
And on the back, he just has a standard angry expression, which is very similar to the ones we've gotten before. But this is a very interesting look for MK, and I really do like how they actually were able to make this an actual minifigure. I wasn't sure if they were going to do it, but they actually did, which is really cool. Overall, for the rest of the outfits for him, the diving outfit where he's kind of a tourist in the Journey to the West storyline is reusing the Ninjago Seabound breathing tanks, which I think is a great reuse of that very versatile, unique piece, which I do really appreciate how they're able to use it again outside of LEGO Ninjago. He just has a camera on and flippers, which is nice. And then the standard outfit, this is basically just the regular outfit that we get him in, dual molded legs, which is always good. The black and red does look nice. I like how he has one black arm and one red arm that kind of makes it feel a little bit more like the monkey version, almost like he is accepting that part of his character, which is a very unique type of design for the character itself, so I do like that. The facial expression that we get for the standard one is just kind of the regular one that we are used to getting for MK, just the one with the face paint and then the normal expression here, but it is a nice one to get, and I do appreciate having another brand new outfit for the character. It's not the most fancy outfit we've ever gotten. We usually have him with a special headphones piece around his neck, or sometimes he has printing on the sides of the legs. Right now, it's kind of just a regular form, but even the regular form is packed full of detail and has dual molded legs, so I can't complain too much. As far as the rest of the team is concerned, we have a series of minifigures for Pigsy, Sandy, May, and Mr. Tang, all wearing celestial armor, which is very cool. We have not seen this in the show yet. We got a bit of a sneak peek because Monkey Kid himself came with the celestial armor in the first half of the year sets, in the other sets that came out this year, but I guess we're kind of just catching up for the rest of the characters. And the thing I like the most is that each one of these characters has a unique torso print, where you can see they didn't just choose to reuse existing prints for the characters to have them wear team uniforms, like they do a lot with Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy stuff. If they're wearing a team uniform, they all have the same torso. Thankfully, they did not do that this time, and each one of them has a very unique torso that harkens back to them. Mr. Tang here, if you rotate his staff here, he actually has the design of his staff emblazoned on the front of the torso itself. They all have a dragon belt motif, but on the sides of the kind of shoulder pads there, he has his motif of the staff. Sandy has this specialized type of design on the side as well that kind of harkens back to his weapon, but also to the clouds. Pigsy has these adorable golden piggies as an emblem on the side of his torso right there, which is a very cool thing to see, and May, of course, has the dragons. Monkey Kid had a unique outfit here, too, and it would have been really cool to see that outfit make an appearance in this wave, but we did just get it in the first half of the year, so I guess they decided to just break it up and give us some new stuff. The rest of the figures are pretty much just using the standard head and hair combinations that we have come to expect from LEGO Monkey Kid, but I think it's really cool how now you can have them as a full unified team if only they actually were able to print Pigsy's legs because I do feel that this feels very plain just having the plain white mid legs we know that they can print mid legs because the Pigsy minifigure that we got earlier this year for the MK team hideout did have printed legs they just did not do it for this one but I feel like it would have been really special if they just had the budget to put printing on his legs as well that being said it's not that big of a deal Representing the Villains faction, we have all returning characters from the first half of the year. Thankfully, they broke up the distribution of the Villains in each of the three story-based sets, which I think makes sense. They are a trio of Villains, after all. I have taken a much more in-depth look at these characters when I did my reviews for the first half of the year sets. The Azure Lion, the Golden Winged Eagle, and the Yellow Tusk Elephant there. But you can see them again right here. You can, of course, go back to my other videos to see them all in-depth, but they are all really fantastic minifigures. After seeing them in the show, I kind of wish that the Yellow Tusk Elephant was maybe not a big fig, but maybe something like an Axel type thing from Nexo Knights, or if he had a more exclusive special mold to really make him feel larger than the other characters. I think that's kind of the only miss for me after seeing what he looks like in the show, but overall they are very cool looking characters overall. I love the cut of the cape for the Azure Lion here. He's got a very unique cape design with the black and the purple being part of the outline here. That is a really cool design for the character itself, and overall, I think this trio of villains are some of the best villains we've gotten for Monkey Kid so far, both in terms of minifigure design but also their characterization in the show. I was a big fan of how they actually were portrayed, so I'm glad to be able to get them once again, multiple copies of them in case you did not get any of the earlier sets. 
Of course, we also have some ink demons and an ink general. These do not really appear in the show in their exact forms of the sets. Usually in the show, they have the ink demons as black blobs, and a lot of them do represent kind of inkified versions of existing characters. So these are obviously just kind of filler villains. They look okay, I mean, I don't necessarily have anything against them, but they do kind of feel like the macaque shadow monkeys that we got last year, where they didn't really appear in the show, and they kind of were just disposable wave enemies, just to kind of be cannon fodder for the heroes in the sense. But moving onwards from those, I think my most anticipated minifigures are from the Dragon of the East Palace, but first of all, we do have to take a look at the two Monkey King minifigures. One of them has a brand new outfit for this wave, which is this one right here from the Dragon of the East Palace. He has printing on the side of the legs and dual molded legs, which is very, very nice. One of the issues that I was noticing with some of the other MK figures from these waves is that if they had printing on the side of the legs, they did not have dual molded legs. Like this one has really nice printing on the sides of the legs, but they are not dual molded. And there is a very awkward cutoff where they clearly should be dual molded, but clearly they did not have the budget to make legs both printed on the side and dual molded for certain characters, but I'm glad they were able to do it for this one. This is, out of all the outfits, a fairly basic one for MK, or for Monkey King himself, but one thing I do like is that when the light hits it just right, you can see the kind of clouded, embroidered pattern on the sash that he's wearing here, which is a really nice detail. I like how that outfit turns out, and I like how you really have to go up close and personal with the details to really be able to appreciate it. This other outfit here is basically the same outfit we have seen Monkey King wear throughout the first part of the season, or for the first part of this year's sets. We haven't quite seen it in the show yet, and curiously enough, the staff that he is wielding is pure gold instead of the red and gold. Not sure what the deal is with that, I guess we'll have to wait and see what it means in the storyline for this, but I'm excited to see what that entails. Lastly, the coolest minifigures, in my opinion, are all of the exclusive, unique minifigures that we got for the Dragon of the East Palace. First of all, we have the Dragon of the East right here, which is a brand new outfit for him. He has a different outfit in the other sets he appears in. He also is flanked by Lobster and Crab Guards, which are very, very funny. I really like the design of these characters in particular, as well as a turtle minister. That is a really funny looking character. And overall, this whole cast of underwater characters is very unique, very cartoonish, but in a fun way. I really do like how they all look. The turtle minister might actually be one of my favorites because you can turn him around and he actually has a specially printed turtle shell, which did come as a spare in the set, which is a very nice thing to get. Really do like how that turned out. And overall, just fun minifigures with very unique head molds to get. Clearly a lot of budget went into these characters, and it really shows because even the lobsters have their tails going down the backs, they all have pearl gold torsos, they just look good as a, as a group of underwater sea-dwelling characters, so definitely the standout minifigures of the wave. Oh, and Mo and a skeleton are here as well. We've seen the skeleton a thousand times before, and Moe is in a kitten format, which we've gotten ever since that we got Sandy as a minifigure, to make them more in scale with each other. But with that, we've summed up our look at the minifigures, and now it's time to just jump all the way to the individual sets themselves. I'll keep my thoughts on the individual sets fairly brief, because again, as I said, I'm going to be doing individual reviews in the next few days, so I don't want to repeat myself, and I want to have different types of content for different folks, so I'll just go through these very quickly, and hopefully if you're curious about any one of the individual sets, you can take a look at the individual reviews, which will be published very, very soon, if not already. The first off, we have the Monkey Kids Blimp. This is the cheapest set at 50 US dollars of this wave. I do wish that Monkey Kid came out with even cheaper sets, but we did get a couple $20 sets earlier this year, so I guess I can't complain too much. The Blimp here is a little bit interesting. They are reusing the LEGO City passenger plane cockpit piece, or the back kind of the back part of the cockpit, or I guess the back part of the plane piece. It's not a new piece, it is an existing one. But because they are using an existing piece, I do feel like the shaping of the blimp is a little bit awkward. I don't know, it doesn't necessarily scream blimp to me. It feels like a very odd shape. I don't really know what to call it. Yeah, I don't know, it's weird. I, I'm a little bit mixed on this build, to be completely honest. The cockpit area is fun. You have a nice little, almost like a tuk-tuk style of vehicle on the front here, harkening back to MK's first vehicle. I like the usage of the teal Bionicle Mystica fins on the back here, and of course you can rotate these propeller pieces back and forth and up and down to really have a very unique design. You have a stud shooter on the top here, and what is especially cool is that 
you can actually lift up these panels and there is a bit of an interior, which was a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. Inside the interior of the vehicle, you've got some stickers for MK and Monkey King. You have a little bit of a plant and you have some other stickers here. There is not a lot of space at all whatsoever here. You really just have to squeeze things in, but you do have some storage space for Pixie's food. You have a map detailing the location of Sandy's weapon. You've got some more different scribbles and stuff, kind of details on the side there. But again, not a ton of space. You can throw some minifigures in there, but there is no easy place for them to sit. Really, you just have this place to sit here. This is a lot larger in the show, and I think it really shows that this is kind of a scaled down, almost chibi version of the actual vehicle in the show itself. What is nice is you do have a bucket so you can kind of have this be raised and lowered. So if you kind of are flying, you can have this be going downwards to allow people to just disembark the ship itself or maybe to pick up any passengers and then hoist that up like so and then fold it backwards and then you have a bucket on the back there. And strangely enough, this also has just a glider. I imagine initially that this was something that attached onto the ship. I thought, oh, okay, when I'm building this, this is something that's supposed to be part of the build itself. But no, this is just kind of a, a random glider. It just kind of sits there. I don't know if there's an easy place to put it. Like, I tried, I was like, maybe this was meant to fit somewhere, but no. I, I mean, maybe I could be completely confused about this. Oh my goodness, I... I just realized this now, but... Yeah, so that definitely goes there. I'm just being dumb. Okay, well that makes more sense. I was a little bit confused. It was not shown in the instructions, which is why I don't think I realized it. So I was like, oh, I, I built this random thing and then I set it aside. Okay, this makes a lot more sense. Alright, that's kind of cool. I do like that. <laughs> wow, that was very, very professional review, of course. I, I totally knew that going in and I was just hoping people in the audience would realize. No, I... But yeah, no. Okay, so this is cool. I like how you have propellers facing forwards and backwards with this mounted onwards. I do not like how it has removed the space for the bucket though. I guess you can still put the bucket on top of it, but that doesn't look quite right to me. I think now you just have to have the bucket kind of off to the side or the front here, which isn't a bad look, but it is something unique. So I do like how this is then a detachable flyer, which makes so much more sense as a side build now. This also comes with a bit of terrain, which actually is fitting with the modular system for the Monkey Kid modular system of builds, which I find very cool how they are continuing to stick with the system of just a couple of Technic pins here to make it work with the City of Lanterns and other terrain builds that we get in the sets. And lastly, we have just a little bit of a side build for the villains. It's just one for the Ink Demons to use to launch projectiles at the heroes. This is just kind of a throwaway build. Overall, I think this is an interesting set. Not a huge fan of the shaping of the blimp. I feel like it is a little bit awkward, and for $50 it is a little steep. I understand they are including four very large molded pieces, but I definitely feel like it could be just a little bit cheaper for what you get. Moving on from this, let's set that aside. We can take a look at the next set, which is Maze Guardian Dragon. Now, the biggest thing I want to talk about here is the price, and we're going to talk about this a lot near the end of the video. Suffice to say, it's way too overpriced in the US at $75, and it's fairly reasonably priced everywhere else at 53 euros. That's pretty much all I have to say about the price right now, we'll revisit that later. Talking about the build though, wow, this is a phenomenal build. I mean, from all angles, this is a really stunning dragon build. I love the headpiece, I especially love how they did not just do a molded head, and Monkey Kid seems to really be sticking to unique brick-built heads for dragons. The only downside is that unfortunately, due to the positioning of the ball joints, it cannot look back and forth, like, at all. This is this is the most you can get. If you move it up, you can have it look back and forth, but really you can just move the head up and down. It is using a brand new element, which is this right here. I'm sure this is going to be very useful for Bionicle and Construction fans. It is an elongated mixel joint, so basically what you have is it's attached right here like so, and you have it here. But because of the way the joint is mounted, like, this doesn't move back and forth at all, so it feels a little bit unfortunate to me. LEGO has not seemingly learned their lesson that mounting heads should be ball joint here, socket here. They, they keep doing it the other way around, and they learned that lesson for Bionicle, but clearly have not quite learned it for other non-Bionicle stuff. Otherwise, though, I really do love this build. I mean, if you look at the amount of detail on this, we're going to talk a lot more about this in the main review, but it is fully mounted on a curve, a complete angle for the body, which is very unique. You can angle the legs back and forth like so, and 
up and down. The wings themselves are very thin, but it makes sense because this is a Chinese-inspired dragon, which they don't even normally have wings, so this is even extra, and I like how you can kind of fold them up to the body and make them feel very ornamental, like what they're supposed to be. The feet have all individual claws. They work on mixel joints, so that looks really good. I like the color blocking a lot. You've got the foliage pieces being used as frills for the legs here. This is very cool how you have an emblem on the chest. I think this is one of my favorite aspects of it where you have the Exoforce robot arms curving around the neck of the creature itself. That just looks so cool to me. I love how this is also, you have the spikes on the back feeling like scales, and typically one of my least favorite things about LEGO Dragons is when they have the tails use these frictionless elements to kind of swing back and forth. I usually feel that they tend to be too floppy and you can't have them hold poses, but in this case, I feel like it actually adds to the effect of the build, where this feels like it naturally does curve and taper down to this point, no matter which way you want to put it, like if you want to put it on this end, that feels very natural to me as well. So for the first time, it doesn't actually bother me that much. Would I have preferred these being mounted on ball joints? Maybe, but this is actually kind of fun to switch around and it thankfully has enough stopping points where it doesn't curve around way too much. Like there are certain Ninjago sets like the Water Dragon from Seabound where it just curves the tail way too much and curves back in on itself. This feels a lot more natural to me. So I really do like the motion of the set here. Of course, there is a seating area for Mei herself, so there is a seat here. It is a little bit awkward to mount a minifigure on this dragon, where you kind of have her just kind of standing up, and then the seat curves around, so that works, but I definitely feel like this is a much better set if you leave the minifigures off, and even especially if you remove the saddle or kind of have this just curve downwards like this, I think that just is a really good look in general, and this feels like kind of the energy dragon that Mei would conjure, which is what it appears like in the show. Moving on from this though, I could keep on gushing about this, but you're gonna have to see my full review. We can take a look at the next build, which is the Mighty Azure Lion. So this is probably the most standard mech style of build that we're going to get from this wave of Monkey Kid. It is basically just your standard vanilla mech. Nothing wrong with it, but there's nothing super special about it either. You can see in terms of posability, you can move the arms back and forth, up and down like so. The elbows are turnable. You also can rotate these around, but unfortunately the hands do not have their own separate articulation, although that's not a huge deal because you can achieve pretty much any pose that you want just by moving these around. The claws can be articulated, which is very nice. I like how you can move the claws around. The legs, unfortunately, do not have any knee joints. You can just move them back and forth. It is pretty limited to, like, this is the furthest forward you can move the foot just because of the placement of the armor here. Now, the feet themselves also cannot rotate back and forth at all. They are locked to just move side to side, which is kind of a side effect of LEGO's current status on mech builds, and they want to make them as solid and sturdy as possible, so they are trying to prevent kids from being able to move them around. There is a cockpit space to place Azure Lion, but I definitely feel like that is just an afterthought added in because kids like putting minifigures inside mechs. This feels very similar to the Crystal King Overlord style of mech from Ninjago Crystallized, where it is clearly this is the character. This is a big scaled version of the character, but they included space in the set itself for the minifigure, kind of like how they put space for battle droids to pilot droid gunships in LEGO Star Wars. Moving onwards to the head itself, you have a fairly decent amount of head articulation. I think my favorite thing about the way the head is built is that the mane, or the hair for Azure Lion, is utilizing the LEGO Ninjago molded dragon elements. Like, these are the same dragon elements that are used in almost all of the other Ninjago dragon sets. You can actually see that one of them right here is featured in a Ninjago Dragons Rising set in one of the mechs here. That is the Aaron mech. Like, that is the exact same piece that they use for dragon heads. But right here, they are used for the back of a main, which I think is one of the most inspired piece usages I've seen yet. It is very cool how they have actually achieved this. I am a big, big fan of the way they pulled that off. Now, my favorite part of the set is actually going to be this. So this, for those who watch the TV show, is a very, very important item in the show. It is basically the ink scroll in which Azure Lion uses to trap his opponents, and he actually can hold it as a supersized version himself, 
which is so cool. I love the usage of the garage door pieces as the actual elements of the scroll itself. That is a very, very cool detail. I also like how they even have this little stud shooter on the end so it can kind of shoot ink. Usually I feel like awkward tacked on stud shooters are not always that great, but I think it makes total sense here because it is actually shooting ink and kind of enveloping other people. This is such a smart build. I love, this is like my favorite part of the set, is just this super scaled version of the Ink Demon Scroll. That's just a very cool thing to have. Overall though, I definitely feel like this is just a fairly standard mech. I'll talk a lot more about this in my general review of the set itself. I think it's okay, there's nothing necessarily that wrong with it, but I do feel like it could have been potentially so much more because it is a cool build, but it also is something that feels very standard and almost like a mech LEGO would have made a couple of years ago. LEGO has evolved a lot in the past couple of years, especially with mech builds, and this does feel like, in some cases, especially how flat and 2D the torso is and no knees, does feel a bit like a thing of the past, but it is not bad. It's just alright, and an alright Monkey Kid set is a very good LEGO set. But lastly, we can take a look at the flagship set of the wave. This is the Dragon of the East Palace, and funnily enough, this literally has nothing to do with the current storyline of Monkey Kid. In fact, it is kind of branded as its own thing. It is a Journey to the West set, which means that this is replicating a moment in Journey to the West, which is really special. The instruction manual actually went into detail about the part of the story this is meant to represent, and talked about the design. They showed concept artwork. This is representing the point where Monkey King gets the staff which is right here, which I just removed, and it's very cool because the actual staff is hidden inside the supersized staff as the large icon of the build. This is like something that a human can wield, which is very nice. I kind of wish that they just made a staff that you could play around with. Like, I want to bonk someone with this, but <laughs> this is a very cool thing to get and to play around with in general. But overall, this is... A phenomenal build. Monkey King location builds are always some of the best builds that LEGO does, and this is no exception. So first off, just some things I want to mention here, and we'll talk a lot more about this in the main review. They've recolored the LEGO Friends ocean creature pieces in the keyed orange or flame yellowish orange, which is a really nice look. They've gotten some dark blue and dark gray recolors of the LEGO City flame piece to act as underwater rock formations. They have recolored the Lord of the Rings leaf piece in vibrant or kind of this uh, opalescent transparent purple. That's really cool. That's really special. Not something you see every day. And overall, there's a lot of really nice things about this. I love the composition of the set because you have a clear walkway. You can have characters walk in through the main gate, which is right here. There are stairs that curve all the way around. You can stop here to play some games. Then you can actually go through the doors into the temple itself. And what's very cool is this entire thing slides open, kind of similar to the other Heavenly Realm set to reveal the throne room on the inside. It has some places for the subjects of the dragon to actually sit and eat tea or drink tea in, which is a very cool thing to get. Let me see if I can get a better camera angle of this because obviously my review studio is just not big enough to be able to showcase the majesty of this build fully splayed out. But I love how you actually have the ornate detailing at an angle here. The throne looks really good. We'll spend a lot more time on this on the main review, but overall very, very cool as a function and how it all closes up. Moving this structure to the back, it is a fairly thin structure, I guess thin all things considered. There's not a ton of interior space, but they did make pretty good use of the interior space that they did have. You've got a weapons or armory area right here with armor, some of the drums that are used as the weapons for the yellow tusk elephant, which I think is pretty funny to see, a treasury and crystal room right here. You have the movable dragon himself, which you can actually pose and have articulated throughout different poses, and you also have nicely built chairs and some nice stickers depicting different parts of the Monkey King storyline. What's very special is when you remove the bed here, you actually have Motion detected at front door. What's very special is when you remove the bed here, you actually have the minifigure version of the ink scroll right there, which is definitely tying back to the main storyline of the wave itself. That is very cool to see and definitely an accessory I want to have my own minifigures wield, especially Azure Lion be holding. And then you can just close that up like so. You have a nice aquarium behind the bed, which is very nice. And overall, the interior space is okay. I think it definitely could maybe be a lot better. Like, they could have made it a little bit thicker. But obviously, the main focus of this build is not the interior. It is just how crazy good this looks 
on the exterior, and it looks really good. I love how this is almost like the underwater temple that we wanted from Ninjago but never got with Seabound. This is just really phenomenal, really fantastic. I think some of my favorite details, obviously you have the staff being the main icon of the build, and then you have the dragon himself, which you can pose around. The head is just completely built in a very unique manner that is different from the May dragon, which is very nice. And yeah, big fan of how this overall set fully turned out, and it is one of the best Monkey King location sets yet. But with that, I think we have summed up our look at all of these sets briefly individually, so what we'll do is now, we can take some time to put them all back and take a look at the entire wave as a whole, because there are a lot of thoughts I have on price, there are a lot of thoughts I have on value, and I'm very interested to hear what everyone else has to think about these sets as well. So let's get into the main concluding overview. Okay, and with that we have summed up our look at pretty much all four of the brand new LEGO Monkey Kid Summer 2023 sets, and this is, in my opinion, a pretty solid wave, but there are definitely two sets that feel a lot better than the other two. Obviously, I am, as I mentioned, a big fan of the Maze Guardian Dragon. Build-wise, price aside, the build itself is phenomenal. This is one of, if not the best Monkey Kid Dragon we've ever gotten, and one of the best LEGO Dragons we've ever gotten in general. I love the shaping of the head and the way that it curves. It is so, so cool. I really especially appreciate the design of the head itself. Again, I just really love that printed eye there, and then you've got a really cool-looking brick-built design. And I like how LEGO Monkey Kid is doing things differently from Ninjago, whereas Ninjago is mostly doing molded heads for dragons, Monkey Kid is making the heads each feel very unique by making them fully brick-built, and they're working really well. This is one of the pinnacles of brick-built dragon head design. The curvature of the body is really cool, I like how everything is at an angle, I also like how the wings are mounted, they kind of feel more like a Chinese-inspired dragon, which is what this is supposed to be, so absolutely, build-wise, this is a standout set, as well as, of course, Monkey Kid location sets never disappoint. The Dragon of the East Palace is so phenomenal. I love the splitting feature that allows you to open it up. You've got all sorts of fun details related to the original Journey to the West. So overall, I'm a big fan of these two sets in particular, just in terms of the builds. The other sets, I think I'm just a little bit more mixed on. The Mighty Azure Lion is a fun build, but I feel like it could have been a lot better. There are no knee joints, which is not entirely unsurprising, but I feel like they could have just included knees using the click hinges, or even using a ton of ball joints like they did with the Samurai X mech back for Ninjago Crystallize. That was a massive mech with knees, so I really feel like they kind of missed out on doing that because it does limit the poseability somewhat. You also have a somewhat awkward head design, I like what they were trying to go for with the Ninjago dragon head pieces or the jaw pieces being used for the main. It is a really inspired piece usage, but I'm not necessarily sure how convinced I am of the actual lion head, and the torso feels a little bit flat and two-dimensional to me, especially compared to a lot of really great Monkey Kid mechs we've gotten in the past. The Demon Bull King as a larger form build was a really cool build, and I really liked how that was done, and this feels like a bit of a step back to me. It kind of just feels like another standard LEGO mech, and I've come to expect a lot more from Monkey Kid nowadays to make me feel that this maybe could have been a little bit better. And lastly, unfortunately, the Cloud Airship, while it is a fun idea for a build, it is my least favorite build because I just feel like it is a little bit awkward and small looking. It feels like the shaping on the airship itself is not quite right. Obviously, they were just working with the pieces they had available to them. So what they're using are the actual LEGO City passenger plane back pieces. These are not new pieces. They were introduced for the City passenger plane. But because they are using them, it means that the shaping of the balloon itself is rather awkward. It feels a little bit jarring in terms of having the design kind of look like this very oblong and narrow shape. Not a huge fan of how that one was done. I like some parts of it, and it is an interesting design for a set. But I feel like we missed out on having a really big Zeppelin-style build. We haven't gotten a build like a Zeppelin ever since, like, LEGO Adventures, so I was really excited when I saw it in the show in the season finale of the latest season, Season 4, and I was like, oh, that's gonna be a huge and amazing set, and I can't help but feeling just a little bit let down by the overall build. But that being said, these builds are still really phenomenal, and a mid-Monkey Kid build is still a very, very good build compared to pretty much anything else that LEGO is putting out, and for that, I can really appreciate and respect it. 
The minifigures are phenomenal and fantastic. I love how each of the characters has their own celestial uniform. That is a really cool detail. It's one of my favorite details about the builds themselves and the minifigures is that they actually have matching uniforms that are not just the same torso print. As we saw, they basically all have unique torso prints with different colorations and emblems to go alongside their characters. I think that's a really cool thing giving the minifigures team uniforms. And I also love how inventive and almost Atlantis inspired the minifigures are for the Dragon of the East Palace which is a set that departs from the main storyline, kind of working on its own region of the Monkey Kid space being part of the Journey to the West retellings, but is still a really phenomenal set and one that I hope they actually visit in the TV show as well. Now, with that, I think we can just wrap things up by talking a little bit about value, because obviously I do want to talk about value in general for each of these sets, the thing is, the obvious one, the elephant in the room, and no, I'm not talking about the yellow tusk elephant, I am talking about Maze Guardian Dragon. This retails for 52 euros. Looking at the prices in other regions, it's like 85 Australian dollars, which is 56 US dollars in Austria. It's like converting to US, this is using the USD equivalent prices, $58. Belgium, $58. Denmark, $71, but everything's expensive in Denmark. France, $58. Germany, $58. Italy, $58. Netherlands, $58. Poland, $60. We're hovering around the $58 to $60 price tag, right? Especially in almost all the regions. It's 53 euros. So why, may I ask, is this... 75 US dollars? If you look along the price tags, it is the most expensive in the US. And that is saying something, because things are usually the most expensive in Denmark or Canada. In Canada, it's $73 when you convert it. In Denmark, it's $71. In the US, it's $75, and that is so baffling to me. This is obviously not worth $75. I see no world where this is worth $75. And I feel bad for folks in the US who are fans of Monkey Kid, who are fans of this build, who want to get this, but simply cannot justify it. I cannot justify ever recommending this at $75. The other thing is that very rarely, Monkey Kid sets, like, never really go on sale. Maybe the ones that aren't selling well do go on sale, so if this doesn't sell well in the US, it might go on sale. Which, I hope doesn't send the wrong message to LEGO, because it is a phenomenal set. It might be one of my favorite sets of the wave, I mean, it definitely is in the top two. I don't know if I like it more than the Palace, but... I really like this build. This is a phenomenal build, and you will hear a lot more about that in my individual review. But the price is just way too much to swallow, and that's really unfortunate. Thankfully, the rest of the builds are actually fairly priced well, at least compared to what we've come to expect from LEGO Monkey Kid. The Azure line being 80 is okay. It's not great. It's not awful. At least it's consistent across all regions. This being 50, yeah, I guess it has a lot of large molded pieces, like 40, 45 would be nice, but 50 I can't complain too much about. And the Dragon of the East Palace being 190 for 2,364 pieces is actually really good. That's an 8 cent price per part ratio, which I know that's a bit of an obscure metric nowadays and it's not really that relevant, but I still feel like that is a lot of bang for your buck for the palace. It's just the dragon that's really overpriced and that is very, very unfortunate. But with that, we've about summed up my thoughts on the entire Monkey Kid Summer 2023 wave as a whole. Once again, thank you so much to LEGO for sending me these for review, and although, of course, the opinions expressed in this review are my own, if LEGO was paying me off to give good reviews, I would not be complaining so much about how stupidly overpriced this set is. So, I appreciate that LEGO has sent me these for free. I would have felt very bad about paying $75 for this, so I'm glad that I didn't have to, but I feel bad for everybody who actually does. It's very unfortunate, but everything else is priced somewhat okay, so that is nice. And if you don't live in the US, this is priced pretty well. Overall, that about sums up my thoughts on this wave, and thank you so much for tuning in to watch this video, and I'm really curious which sets build-wise are your favorites, excluding price. Let me know in the comments. For the builds of these sets, which ones are your favorites? How would you rank them? There's only four, so it should be pretty easy to rank. And including price, which ones are your favorites and least favorites, and rank them. Always curious to hear what other folks think. If I had to rank the sets, I think it would be in terms of build. 
Maybe I would do this as number one, although the Dragon of the East Palace is a very close number two. They're, they're pretty equivalent to me for very different reasons. This is a good smaller build that's really detail-packed and fantastic, and that is an absolutely stunning location build. Then number three would be here, the Azure Line, and number four at the Blimp. These ones are on a bit of a lower tier for me in particular, especially compared to other Monkey Kid sets, but I just love these two in particular in terms of build. But of course, I want to hear your thoughts, so do let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching. All right, and with that, we have summed up our look at all four of the brand new LEGO Monkey Kid sets coming out June 1st, 2023. Let me know down in the comments below, what do you think of these builds? Which ones are your favorites? And how do you think they stack up compared to what we've actually seen in the show so far? Obviously, it is really cool to get so many more new locations, like the amazing ones we've gotten so far. We have yet another temple to add to the list. We also have another amazing mech, a brick build character for a Monkey Kid type setting for a villain. We have a great dragon. One of the best dragons that LEGO has ever done, albeit maybe a little bit overpriced, and a completely unique vehicle to go alongside all of the other LEGO Monkey Kid vehicles that we've gotten so far. All in all, this is a pretty great Monkey Kid wave, but I am really curious to hear your thoughts on not just your favorite sets in this wave, but also what are your favorite sets in the entirety of the Monkey Kid theme, and how do you think these stack up to those? And so, without further ado, that's about summed up this video. Thank you all so much for tuning in to Duck Breaks. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. Thanks so much, and bye for now.